Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and this series on Flutter Google Maps with Autocomplete. Uh, when we left it last time, we actually left it here, if you noticed. <laughs> we were uh, functioning with the hot reload, but as soon as I restarted, I got an error. And that is because on the home screen, when we created our containers to layer on top of the map, we created uh, the, the search list. And we put a conditional argument on the dark portion of the screen that you see there as a background, but nothing on the list. I said I was going to do it in the video, and then I never did. So uh, if you come in your build method in your scaffold, and you may have already figured all this out, but inside the stack we have three containers. We have the map, we have the dark box, and we stuck an if statement in front of it, and then we have the list builder, and so I'm just going to copy that statement and also stick it in front of the list builder so that if we don't have any search results we're not trying to check the length of it and that will resolve it right there also i noticed i did uh, run this on my iphone but when i went to run it on the new simulators you get with xcode um, at least mine is not preloaded with a location by default so i had to go to features location custom location and set a location uh, otherwise it was just going to spin and spin and spin indefinitely so uh, I did have to do that it doesn't happen on a phone but with the emulator you do have to uh, give it a location before it's going to uh, to tune into it all right so where we left this last time we are able to search locations and we're able to pick them but nothing happens when we pick them and what we want to do is Fix it so that when we click on the location, the map is going to take us to that location automatically. So that's going to be our task today. And then in the fourth episode, we will hit on these filters here uh, that uh, find the nearest location and then zoom in or zoom out appropriately so that the bounds auto adjust. That will be part four. But in part three, uh, we're just going to hook up this part where we pick a location and the map responds to it. So to make that happen, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a map controller. We don't have one yet. Uh, and the Google Maps and Flutter, the way it works, it will load up with some pre-configured values. But uh, if you want to change the map afterwards, you need to have a controller and do that through the controller. So we'll add a map controller uh, to our widget. We're going to go back to our places service and when we are getting results here we're getting a places id and so we want to hook up our places service to be able to pass that places id back to the google places api and get some details on that place including the coordinates of the place when we get that back from the api we're going to want to dump that into a stream that we can listen to on our home page here so we'll create a model to get our place results. We will create a service to go out there and get those. Uh, and then we'll create the stream to listen on that. And then we will create a function that will uh, tell our controller that we have a new location and we want it to, to go ahead and do that. Then lastly, we will just wire up the function so that when we click on one of these list tiles, it's called. And then we'll put a stream here on our home page uh, that we can listen to that response. And then we'll just put a stream listener on our widget so that it is aware that a change has taken place in our block and can respond accordingly. All right, so that's our task. And so the first thing I said is we're going to add a map controller. So here on the home screen dot dart page, we can come all the way up above the build function and inside of our state object, let's go ahead and add a completer of type Google Map Controller and we'll call that underscore map controller and we will set that equal to a new instance of a completer and looks like we'll need to import that from Dart async So with that in place, with our map controller, we can come down to the bottom and write ourselves a function so that when we get a new location, we will have a function ready to, to take that controller, pass the new location to it, and have the 
map respond. So we can come outside of our build method, inside of our class. So right in, right before the last closing curly brace, we can give ourselves a function, and that's going to be a future. And it's a void. We're going to do all our controls through the controller, so we don't actually have to return anything from this function. Uh, we can call it go to place. And we can add in a place. We don't actually have a place model yet, so don't worry about the error there. But let's make it asynchronous. And what we need to do to get our Google Map Controller is to say we're going to have a final Google Map Controller. And we'll call it controller, lowercase. And what we'll do is await map controller dot future. All right, and once we have this controller object, we can use it to control the map. And so one of our options is to animate the camera. So that will take a camera update dot new camera position. And this will take a camera position object, which has a target, which is a lat LNG. And in here we will pass uh, you know what, let's hold off on actually passing that in there because we're going to pass in some properties from our place object. Tell you what, let's just do 35.0 and 75.0 and let's remember to come back. And then outside of that target will be zoom property and we'll just set that at 14. You can set that at whatever you want. All right, so maybe it would have been better to do our place model first, but let's do that now. So we have in our models folder, we model the search results, which is the results of our autocomplete. So in the Google Maps uh, documentation or the places documentation, uh, we got responses for autocomplete. And remember, this is all part of Google Places API. Uh, the next one we're actually gonna wanna hit is the details. So the autocomplete gives us an ID for a place, but it doesn't give us the geographic coordinates. But if we have the ID, um, the easiest way to get all that information is to use the places details uh, API. And so this is our URL here. Um, it's got output here, so you need to specify whether you want JSON or XML. And then the parameters are uh, well, the ones that are required are key and places ID. There's some language, regions, etc. We're not going to use those unless it uh, suits your purpose. So if I put that into Postman and just get a, an idea of what our response is going to look like, we can start to model this up by picking out the fields we want. So for output, I'm going to want JSON. And then for my parameters, so we said we want a key, and we're also going to want a place ID. I think that's what they said in the document there. Yep, underscore. So the key I'm going to grab on my, you can grab it from your Google console, but I do know I have it here in services in places service, so I'll just grab that there. key equals that and place ID actually you know what I think I'm gonna I don't have one but let's flip to the documentation um, and I'm gonna go a little further down here and I see they have an example here with a place ID so I'm just gonna use that one
All right. So if I send that, so I get address components, not really interested in that. Uh, let's see, I get geometry and geometry has a location which has my latitude and longitude. So I want the location object, I want the geometry object. Um, I think I also want Well, there's a lot there. Um, I think I'll also grab vicinity just because that has uh, just kind of a nice friendly label of where that is. Um, and is there a name property too? Yeah, there's also a name property. So I'll just grab name, vicinity, and um, location. So what we're going to have to do is model the location object model the geometry object, and then we can attach those to our main place object. Um, you could get fancy here and try to flatten this model, but I prefer to just model those out myself. So we've come into the models folder. I like to start on the inside and work my way out. So I'm going to create a model for a location object. So I will add And I'm going to call that location. And pretty simple modeling here. We're just going to create class location. And our two fields are lat and longe. That is my dog. He's a very loud sleeper. He's confined to my office because he's eaten everything we've owned, which we've thought. And we'll do a factory constructor down here. Once he ate all our possessions, we'd be set. But he started eating the carpeting now. So we'll do location from JSON map dynamic dynamic parsed JSON like that. And anytime you are uh, dealing with embedded JSON, you're better off just to go dynamic, dynamic. Uh, it seems to recognize that better when you start to pass objects inside of another. And so here we'll just return location object and we'll build one from our results. So the parse JSON lats and I just look in here at this. So I know I'm going to get this location object. I'm going to have a lat and LNG property. So we'll use those. All right, location's all set, so working from the inside out. So I've got location, now I need geometry, and uh, that's another simple model. So we'll create a new object in there called geometry. And this one's even, even simpler than location because all we want is... Well, we got to get our class there, geometry. And all we want is the location. So we will get the location. Make sure I import that location type from my models. And then just cover my constructor. So a name constructor with this dot location and then geometry dot from JSON map dynamic dynamic parse JSON and we'll get a geometry object. I want to return that. And the location will be parsed JSON location. And I should have a factory keyword in front of there. And then we're all set. All right. So we've modeled from the inside out. We've modeled our location. We've modeled our geometry. Now we're at the high level. So we can go ahead and grab geometry. We can grab the 
name property and we can grab vicinity. So one more model. And this one will be called place. So we've got place search and now we'll just have place, class place. And we'll take in geometry, which we'll call geometry. Final string will be our name, final string vicinity place and so this dot geometry well order doesn't matter take them as they come and then a factory constructor so factory place from JSON and that will be a map here we can go ahead and put a string because we're at the top level for our key value keep the values dynamic we'll do parse JSON and we'll return a place. So geometry, and this is, uh, we're gonna do geometry from JSON, geometry. And I'm feeling like I made a mistake in that last model. So I'll circle back to it. So this is formatted address will be our name. So let's see, I'm looking at my source code and I must have decided that I liked this better than the actual name property for the name. There goes the dog again, he's whistling now. So I guess I'm gonna grab that. If you wanna grab a different property, you can, but I'm gonna map this formatted address to vicinity getting to that age where the decisions I made three days ago or a week ago are just foreign to me <laughs> logic for why they why they came about forget about it that's the dog again all right so we got that there and then I was paranoid that I'd done geometry wrong and uh, sure enough I did I uh, actually needed to come outside of this and cast this to a location object. So location from JSON and then put that inside parentheses there. Okay. All right. All done modeling. So let's come out to our home screen here. And now that we have a place object, I can just import that, get rid of the error. And before I forget, let's do place dot. Uh, let's see, we just did this place dot. So we go into our geometry object, then we can go to our location. And then off of that, we can grab a latitude. And then our model will be place.geometry.location, of course, and then LNG here. All right, so that function is all set to be called. All right, so let's revisit our places service. And remember, we did model places search and place separately, but we said places service is all going to be one service because it's all really going to the same place. And so I think what I'm going to do is just copy this one here. Save ourselves a little bit of time. And what we're going to call this one is get place. So this is going to have a place ID. And then we're just going to go use that model. Um, and this call we just mocked up here in Postman to go get it. So. What's coming in here is string place ID. And we're not getting a place search result. We're going to get uh, actually just a place. So let's get rid of the list part too. So that should be future of type place. We'll need to import place. 
And you notice I am using IntelliJ. I know I started this in Visual Studio Code. I'm getting tired of all the pop-ups that come up in Visual Studio Code. I think it makes it very hard for people to see uh, what I'm doing. And I've liked IntelliJ, so uh, I'm working with that here. Hopefully that's not a distraction for you. So our URL, I'm gonna go back to Postman and I'm gonna grab what I put in for a mock-up here. All right, and I have my key up here, so where it says key, I can get rid of that up to the ampersand and do key. And then my place ID, I can replace with whatever I'm passing in here. So I will get a response. I will decode that into JSON. A um, little different um, action here because we don't want to cast this as a list. So for our JSON result, let's go ahead and get the result object. And so this is just, I'm just grabbing this based on what I got here. So I'm actually getting an HTML attributions array that has nothing in it. And this result property has everything I'm interested in. So I'm grabbing that specifically from the results or the bot, the response body. And I'm just going to cap cast that to a map string dynamic. And I don't need to map through the results because I'm not cycling through a list. So I can just do place from JSON and pass in JSON result. And because we've modeled the, I guess we'll call that result, because there's only one. <clears throat> because we've modeled the fields that we want, it's just going to pick off the ones we want and return those to us and leave everything else uh, on the table. Okay, so we can definitely get our place here. Uh, and what we want to do to, com to, to communicate that to the view is set up a stream, set up a function that will feed a stream that we can listen to uh, on this homepage here. So I'm going to go to blocks and I'm going to go to our application block. And up here in my variables, I'm going to create a stream controller called selected location that I can dump that location into when I get my future back. So stream controller place and we'll call it selected location and we will set that equal to a stream controller of type place and it'll just be a new stream controller. I do need to bring in place. Uh, I can see a warning up here that I'm opening up a stream and not closing it. So let's write myself a dispose method down here. And we will do selected location. Close like that. Uh, actually, that is a uh, override class of change notifier. So let me just call that so I get the super dot dispose. And then in here, I will do selected location. That close like that. And you know what, before I forget, I do need to call this at some place. So let me come out to the home screen here. And let's come up to the top and let's create a dispose method here. So when the widget gets disposed, uh, that's when we'll call the provider as uh, dispose method. So we just make sure all those streams get disposed. So let me do a final application block. In fact, I think I'll just copy it from here. And because I'm doing it in a dispose method as opposed to a build, I do need to make sure that I set listen to false. And then that'll give me access to the application block and I can say application block dot 
dispose and then we just make sure that those streams are actually taken care of all right so back into the application block let's come down below search places and let's create a function that we can call from the view that will trigger that whole chain of events that we just have set up where it will uh, get the place ID off of this selection that we've made, whichever one we click on, pass it to the back end service, and uh, and then update the stream when it gets a response. So we'll call that set selected location. It will be a string. And we will be able to give it a place ID off of our list view. It'll be asynchronous. And what we can do is due to our selected location stream, we can add the awaited value of places service get place and pass in our place ID like that. And then we will want to notify our listeners. Okay, so with that function in place, let's go ahead and flip over to our screen, our home screen, and let's call that whenever anybody clicks on one of these tiles. So home screen, uh, we've got our list view here for search location we've got our list view builder down here which is our container which has these uh, options on it we've got our list tile and inside of our list tile we can now add an on tap method so parentheses open up a block and what we're going to do is application block dot set selected location so that function we just created and inside of there we want to pass application block dot search results bracket index so our current record on the list view builder and the property we're looking for is place id and so if we tap that don't expect anything to happen unless you go to the place of service and you put in a breakpoint. You can then see that that call is being made. And our last step, home screen, uh, is to actually notify the map and call this function down here to move that uh, camera position around. And actually, I think we need to make this all disappear too. So to the tackle the first part, make the camera position uh, move to the place that we've just selected. We're going to want to set up a stream listener up here at the top. Uh, let's see, we've got our dispose method here. Let's come up above that and do an init state method. And we'll want to bring in our application block. So I'm just going to copy what we got here from dispose like that. And so we want application block dot selected location dot stream dot listen. So that's the stream that we're dumping into when we call set selected location after the future resolves. Uh, let's call it not an event, but a place. And if the place is not equal to null then we will use our go to place function and pass in that place all right so that's a subscription to a stream so we should dispose of that so if I come up here uh, below the completer, the, the map controller, I'm going to create a stream subscription 
for location subscription. And I'll set that equal to the listener we just set up. Uh, and then in dispose, I can get rid of it. So I can do subscription.cancel like that. All right, and so with that in place, we should be pretty close to having the camera shift. Uh, one little step here though, we do need to connect the map controller to the map. Uh, so let's go down to our container, Google Map. And after our zoom, let's say on map created, we're gonna pass in a Google Map controller and we'll call it controller. Open up a code block and in here we can do map controller dot complete controller. All right, and with that, I believe if we wanna to go to Sandusky, Ohio and we click on that, uh, let's do a hot restart. And there it goes. All right, so as, uh, as I suspected, we do need to get rid of uh, this uh, overlay and the words, uh, but the map is doing what it should do. So we do have a uh, condition here on our overlay elm elements, and one of them is if the search result is not equal to null, then it will show. So if we come back to our application block and we find our set selected location and inside of there, we just say search results equals null. Then the notify listeners will update our UI and we should be able, let's select somewhere different, to go to Sandwich, Massachusetts, sounds delicious and have that disappear. All right, so wherever we wanna go, we should be able to search it, select it, what is STL Germany? And it will take us to that spot. All right, so that's gonna wrap this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna finish off this app uh, by adding this step where after we're taken to a location, we are able to uh, select a chip down here and find the nearest one of those items, whether it's a pet store, pharmacy, locksmith, whatever. So we're going to tap into Google Places and the types, um, and then we're going to find those. We're going to automatically adjust the bounds of the map depending on the results. Uh, so it will, it will uh, scan in or out depending on where we select. It looks like I've got this uh, demo app stopped, so it's not going to do it for us, but you've seen it before. And so that will be the uh, fourth and final episode of this series. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.